Twas the night before Christmas, and the workshop stopped shuddering. The boilers grew cold, and the engines stopped fluttering. Hello out there. This video is going to be a breakdown on a few of the models and the progression of history of the throttling governor for steam engines. So, people have probably heard the saying, balls out. Well, that's what happens when one of these puppies here on the table get spinning up to speed. These balls, painted red, expand due to centrifugal force. And when they do that, they apply some force to a rod, which is in the center of all of these governors. And based on the model, that rod might go up or down, which controls a valve in a chest, which is normally sat below these governor top castings here. The Governor device was kind of pioneered by James Watt during the Industrial Revolution, a major steam engine player. So there are many categories of governor. I'm going to break them down first into throttling governor versus valve adjusting governor, if you will. So these styles are considered throttling governors. Watt's original governor um, adjusted a butterfly valve inside of a inside of a pipe similar to a carburetor does. Um, then with the coreless engine, there were governors that would adjust the, basically adjust the valve timing. So that was one system. Normally, normally they were completely me mechanically connected to the engine. So there'd be a system of gears that came right off the main shaft, which spun the governor, and then the control rod adjusted the timing. Whereas these throttle governors, they would have a throttle valve, which had a, a balance valve sur surrounded by a casting, and uh, that was connected to this upper section. And they were driven by some sort of um, external link, so a chain, a belt, a rope, something like that. So those are kind of general categories. On top of those categories, we have spring versus gravity governors. The early days, gravity governors were used, such as this big old unit that I'm sitting on. This is a Gardner three-inch inlet uh, gravity governor. It should have a little ornamental spindle on top here. Basically, gravity pulls these balls down, and on this little, there's a fixture on the side. There should be a weight. That's your adjustment. We'll talk about adjustments in a little bit. As this thing starts to spin, driven by a flat belt pulley on this far side, the balls come up driven by centrifugal force, push the rod on the inside down, which closes the valve inside the chest. Um, spring governors came around later. They realized that springs could be controlled a little bit more precisely or a fair bit more precisely than gravity alone. So the three examples on the table here, the gardener, the pickering, and the waters are uh, all spring governors. I'll include honorable mentions of the Judson governor and the leader the leader had a horizontally spinning shaft um, and ball system with a spring in a funny different orientation. And the Judson, uh, in the early days, both Gardner and Judson ran gravity governors like this. Judson came up with kind of a mechanical link three ball governor with a spring, a coil spring in the center. Um, and then these orientations of governor are the Gardner, which is a... Whoop. Uh, 1883 patent on this guy. The Pickering is an 1862 patent and the Waters is an 1871 patent. Uh, the Waters were famously installed on all case road locomotives or so they say. Pickering and Gardner were used on many many stationary and uh, traction engines. Um, Sears Robot Company that sold their Kenwood line of engine, they came outfitted with Gardner Governors. Um, and then Pickering was on many, many other things. The uh, Avery traction engine, for example, it's a two-cylinder traction engine, had a Pickering but mounted horizontally. The springs let these style of governors effectively work in any orientation. Uh, the Waters has loop springs like this. And the balls are connected to links. So as they come out, they push down on this central shaft. The pickering has 
leaf springs, these ones are stacked. The early, early pick rings based on the 1862 patent were just two, two fly balls with these leaf springs. Three came about a little bit later. So as these come out, the whole top of the spindle goes down and that pushes the, uh, the central rod. And the gardener operates in a very similar way, but the balls are held with these links and then you have springs. These are three leaves only on the bottoms. And again, there's a link in the center that as this, oh, I guess this is kind of inverse. As the gardener operates, the balls come out. The central shaft is actually pulled up instead of pushed down like these two other ones and the gravity governors. Um, we can talk about adjustments next. All of these governors can be adjusted in some way to tweak the speed of your engine based on machinery. So you can set speeds based on the ratio of pulleys from the engine to the implement, or you can tweak the speed of the governor itself, which uh, adjusts how much steam is let in. So on the gardener, we have a wheel here, a wheel with a jam nut, and this applies more or less force to a spring inside the casting. And the spring puts force on this shaft here, which has this big arm. This arm is called uh, the Sawyer's lever, or often referred to as that. Maybe there's a more technical term, but this is the Sawyer's lever. The Pickering has it as well. Uh, the origin is that the Sawyer or someone operating the piece of equipment could have a direct connection to this governor and could pull it, a wire or a rope, and that would shut the governor it would shut the inlet of steam to the engine right away and do so remotely. So I'm attached to this. The spring applies more or less force based on how much tension you add. So if you add a lot of tension to the spring, uh, the force is now being more down force is added to the central link so that the governor's uh, the fly balls are working against more of a force. So more steam will be allowed in before the uh, fly balls are forced outward and close the valve. That's how you adjust the gardener of this style. The early gardener gravity governors like this should have an arm coming off and they had an adjustable weight, kind of like the early pressure releases. So you have your arm, adjustable weight. Uh, the further out it is, the more weight it's pushing against the action of uh, centrifugal force and the fly balls pushing down on the center rod. The pickering is adjusted with a key or a, um, a key with a worm gear on it. This worm gear is connected to a worm wheel, and the more you tension that spring, the more force is applied upward on the central link, also um, resisting the outward motion of the balls. The waters governor has, um, it should have, this one's missing it, but there should be another plate with a wing nut on top, and that does a similar thing. So as these balls are pushing down like this, um, this wing nut will be pulling this spring system and then the central shaft against each other. I'll, um, next I'll mention safety devices. So these, all these governors are simple. They don't have safety devices on them. Um, safety device, extremely important because if you were to lose control of a governor or lose connection to the governor, you risk the engine getting full steam and basically accelerating until something lets go. Often that failure would be in the form of a flywheel explosion, which is pretty well the worst thing that can happen. Uh, it just tended to be the weakest link, cast iron spinning really fast. It could be a uh, uh, connecting rod or something, but often on really big engines, especially like something that this three inch gardener would have run, the uh, the tension, the, the cast iron wouldn't be able to hold itself together anymore based on the centrifugal force of a high, high speed flywheel. And it would literally pull itself apart. And these things being from multiple hundred to multiple thousand pounds would obliterate and fly everywhere. And they, they were known to take the buildings down around them. Uh, there were lots of instances of this. I'll try to include some pictures of a, of a flywheel explosion. So most of these massive engines were coreless engines and it would have been a mechanically linked failure, but the same concept applies. If your drive belt falls off, the governor stops, it acts as though the engine is stopped and it allows full steam 
uh, which will then lead to a catastrophe. So if I grab a pulley, here are a couple examples of governor pulley. This one's very simple, symmetric, slides on the shaft. Um, there's a set screw that locks it. Both of these pulleys you can see have these little outer ridges. Those are to keep, keep the belts on if you have a little bit of twists and so the belt doesn't walk off. This style of pulley that came with this pick ring is nice in that it's shaped so that it can go much further than just the protruding shaft will allow it. So it can slide on over the extended um, shaft support in the case that your driving pulley is much in on your engine, much more in. If the driving pulley is further out, then you can reverse it and it can extend beyond the stock shaft length. So these are common for flat belts. You can also see these governors with chain sprockets attached or the really early and generally the smaller ones had rope, kind of um, curved pulleys for running rope. So the balanced valve. Steam valves are very important, especially the governor driven ones, because you don't want the pressure of the incoming steam to bias uh, the action of the valve. So this is an example of a Pickering balanced valve that came with this governor. It's for a two inch inlet. These three, all three are probably from between one and a half and two inch um, inlets. So the steam comes into the center here. Imagine this is your casting containing this thing and it's held up right now. So steam is going to be allowed from my hand to travel upward and from my hand to travel. Uh, where is this? Steam's coming in, so it'll go up and it'll go down. So that force up and down basically cancels itself. Whereas if you only had half of this, for example, now the steam's pushing this up and you have to somehow compensate in your mechanism for that force. And that force is going to change based on how much can pass um, and your flow and that type of stuff. So these little cast protrusions on top, those are your lower limits. So when the valve's all, way, all the way closed, these little things are going to be pressing against the chest, uh, against, the, against the seat, sorry. So... If you can imagine my hand is the inside of the chamber, this is what's exposed to the steam. So it comes in below, and then it'll come out and around, and then from the bottom straight down into the valve chest on your engine. Nine o'clock. So uh, if you look closely, the valve has these tapers. That is to... Um, reduce the likelihood of the engine fluttering or shuddering uh, based on where you look. Fluttering. Fluttering is caused by um, kind of a, a, an open loop system. So your engine, your valve is at the top. You open your, uh, like your shut off. Steam comes in, goes into the engine, engine speeds up. Now the fly balls come out and close the valve. If there is no taper, you're going to have a hard shut off. It will, it will pass and then it will close all steam to the engine. That will cause the engine to slow down or stop. The governor will go in and this thing will open again. So in a cycle of that, you're going to have the engine slow, fast, slow, fast, slow, fast. And that's without any load on it at all. So you don't want that. You want your engine to be running consistently. That's why these things are designed. Uh, so you don't have flickering electrical current or your loom is running fast and slow and the pattern goes out of whack. Um, so this, when you're getting close to cutting off, you're still allowing a little bit in. And then equally, when you open it again, you're going to let a little bit in before you let this whole amount uh, to flow. So that's how this balanced valve is designed. Now I believe the best way to understand how these governors operate, or how they act anyway, is to see them do that. So uh, let me show you how these work. I have a crank off of a forge blower for these two, and I'm going to try to use this pin for the waters. 
first thing I'll make sure everything moves freely. A little dose to all these. These things spent their lives pretty well bathing in oil before I got any of these. They were uh, caked, just caked in a mixture of either cutting fluids and metal dust or sawdust and oil paste, which in many instances helped preserve them. And that's kind of cool because you can think about the factories or the shops in which they were running. This isn't working. Okay, after a brief intermission, I'm back. I realized the hand crank gave nowhere near the amount of speed that was needed, so I, there it is, quickly cobbled together a drill driver. And with this, hopefully you'll be able to see the action of these things go. Oh, <laughs> I guess the battery's getting low. How about for fun, we increase the tension on the spring and see how much more force it takes. Well, it is noticeable. Pretty cool. Well, that should have showed up nicely. Let's see if it can do it with the pickering. Oof. Come on. Pickering is much more tight, I'm not sure why. Mm. Well, that might have to sit. I'm going to try out this horizontal Leonard engine from sometime between 1880 and 1910 range. As a one inch pickering governor, I guess first thing you do is set this cut off here. Just spring the, uh, actually spring it up so the action of the governor, the governor will work. Try her out, is it open? All the vapor coming out of there is oil just sitting in the engine. So right now it's running slowly on the governor, so I'll uh, go and adjust the ball ranger on the governor and get it to open up a bit more.
the waters. Come on, you can. This is pretty shady once again. We have this pulley on here kind of sitting pretty loosely with an Allen key being held as a pin, but it should work. It is the waters governor. Well, I hope you enjoyed this video on uh, steam throttling governors. Pretty fun to make. It's taken me a while now to restore each one of these to where they can somewhat function and be explained. Um, Merry Christmas and happy holidays to all those people viewing this out there. And uh, until next time, have a great day.